Nuzlocke in one Pokemon game? It's too easy, and powered by my fellow content creator Nerdy Edits, I embarked on the greatest Pokemon challenge of all time, the nine game Nuzlocke Roulette. I put a game from each generation of Pokemon on the wheel, and whichever game I landed on, I had to Nuzlocke. A Nuzlocke means I catch one Pokemon per route, no items in battle, and if a Pokemon faints, it's gone forever. Pretty straightforward, right? Well, no. You'll see. I rode Pokemon Black and headed straight into it, picking Tepig as my starter and catching Patchrat, my first encounter. I was grinding at Patchrat, though, it died to a wild Lillipup, meaning it's time to spin the wheel. That's right. Every time I lose a Pokemon, I have to spin the wheel and go into a different game. If I white out in any of the games, it's off the wheel. Permanent. I play each game as many times as it takes until I roll credits in at least one of them. But if I don't beat a single one and wipe in them all, I lose. Go down to the comments now and guess on how long this took me, and what game you think I won. I mean, you have a 1 in 9 chance. The next game I rolled was Leaf Green, so I booted up Pink Charmander as my starter, naming them The Music and heading up to Route 1. I catch a Rattata, naming her Heckler. I go into Route 22, left for Viridian, and catch a Menke, naming her F. I grind up Heckler and Athlete to higher levels, and foolishly take on the optional rival fight. I leave my level 6 Athlete against this level 9 Pidgey, like severely out damage, and then I realize. I'm gonna wipe. I send in Heckler, getting Pidgey to about 30% before being dead next turn. I'd finally use the music, getting in two scratches before also getting to death's doorstep. I sacrifice Rattata to send out Mankey, getting the KO before Athlete and the music both fall to Squirtle, wiping and removing Pokemon Leaf Green from the wheel. I actually have a lot of confidence in my abilities for this game, but I was underleveled for the optional fight and totally underestimated by rival, and I paid the price. I have next with Heart Gold, a game I was also confident in my ability to beat. I picked up a Totodile named Obama, beating my rival with ease and catching Pidgey on Route 1, naming them Cementia. I go up to the route and catch Spiro as well, naming him Ford F-150. Passing through Cherry Grove, I buy more Pokeballs before catching a Metapod ahead, naming them Wallace. I turn up Pidgey and Spiro on the weak bugs above Cherry Grove before getting into a battle with Bug Catcher Dog. I was speeding up through this fight since I was only grinding, two hit KOing every Caterpie I had seen up to that point, as on 4 HP and a second Caterpie came in. I knew I wouldn't get one shot because the Caterpie tackles only did 2 HP. But not if that Caterpie gets a crit. Spiro falls and I stupidly set out Cementia, who only had 1 HP. Even though I was a level lower, I thought I would outspeed, and I didn't. Caterpie outsped me and hit a second crit in a row, killing them both. The next game I sent into was Pokemon Y, and I knew that all these deaths were from reckless speed up use, so I decided it was time to lock in. I choose my starter, Benz the Froki, and carefully go through, catching just a raccoon, sub train, it's a bird, and impact. I go up against a gym trainer with my underleveled team and barely win without losing any. I knew I had to grind up, so I evolved sub train into a big B drill and started the fight against Viola, not realizing my secret weapon, Flesh Link, didn't know pet. Beedro takes out Surskit, wasting Viola's potion and killing it, but only had 5 HP after the encounter. Out next was Vivillon, so I sent out Fletchling, and that's when I realized I was cooked. Each member took a turn doing damage until Vivillon's infestation stopped me from switching Zigzagoon out. Zigzagoon fell, and I brought out Benz the Froki to finish the fight. Froki got Vivillon into the red, thought a quick attack would be enough to finish her. It wasn't. Froki also fell, causing me to use Impact to finish the fight. That fight was rough, and losing Froki was definitely a huge problem, but I would have to worry about this later. Out of Pokemon Y and into Pokemon Violet. Except, I couldn't. The Switch I was using wasn't the Switch I bought the game on, meaning even though the account that owned the game was on the Switch and could play it, every other account on the Switch couldn't. Meaning the account I was using to play all of these Switch games couldn't play it. I wouldn't have this problem with Pokemon Shield though, considering I owned a physical copy, but it unfortunately meant that Violet was out of the rotation. I spun the wheel and went into Pokemon Shield. I'm not sure why, but it was either the capture card I was using or the cable I was using, I was having some really bad input delay of about half a second while playing Shield, making the experience super frustrating. But I tapped it out, going straight into the action, picking Sigma the Sob. I do all this boring early game stuff, finally getting to the meat and potatoes of the game. I catch Luck the Rookie D on the first route, and Toucan and the Hoot Hoot on the next. I take out Hop at Magnolia's lab, beating him easily and obtaining the Wishing Star. I finished all that and went off to the wild area. Since Pokemon Shield has overworld encounters, I decided to close my eyes and just run into the grass to find a Pokemon. But for wild area encounters, to give it a little bit more randomness, I would do one raid per area, catching whatever Pokemon it was I found in the raid. I caught Minchino, Corphish, and Duskull in the wild area. 
picked my number for the gym challenge and go to my hotel, defeating Tim Yell and getting a good night's sleep. Ah, spaghetti. In the morning, I watched people of all ages walk into a soccer pitch before skipping town and fighting hop once more. I beat hop with ease as always, going on to the next route to grab my encounter. I catch a stunky named Gambling and take on fights throughout the route, before losing luck the rookie to some random Zezu I thought I could take out. We mourn the loss of luck before going into our next game, Pokemon Shield. Again. I keep going down the route, heading into Galar Mines and catching a Diglett. Again, I was fighting random trainers until I foolishly left Hoot Hoot out against a Roganrola, losing my second bird. I spin the wheel and we got sent back into Johto. I catch Root the Bellsprout and Lefty the Geodude before heading into Violet City. I make a beeline to Sprout Tower, proving to be a mistake about 10 seconds later. Both of my birds are dead, I had a Metapod with no attacking moves, and Bellsprout with only Vine Rip, a Rock type, and a Water type. This tower was about to be rough. I forgot to grab my guaranteed rat in the tower and head into the first fight. I realize how bad my team is and I lose Obama the Totodile to win the fight. Our time in High Road was short, but our time in Black was arguably shorter. Having only Tepig, the end of fight was close, but my man Tepig pulled out a win. Went into the next row, catching Purloin, and immediately lose it while grinding up. Well, that was awesome. Now I have to go to the gym with only Tepig, but that is a problem for another day. We spin the wheel and land on part gold. Again. Back in heart gold, I catch Savior the Rattata in Sprout Tower. This rat was our ticket to victory in this tower. This rat was going to guide my team to the desert of Bell Sprouts. He was going to die immediately while training, just like Purloin. The wheel takes me to the Alola region, where I aged 10,000 years before finally picking my starter pop Leo and naming him Inside Job. Inside Job and I head to Route 1, catching a Pick Pack which I named Grebin. I level up Grebin a bit before taking on the first trainer, losing them in one hit. And things are not going well for me. The Alola games are notorious for having little to no early game routes, meaning losing Piggy Peck to a non-important trainer is really rough for me and increases my chance of wiping exponentially. It's out of Moon and into Emerald, and I was feeling really confident going into this game, having Nuzlocke this game many times. I picked the best starter Mudkip, naming him Job. I beat Brendan easily and get my balls, going up to my first encounter being Poochiena, naming him Fascism. I grind up Fascism, going left to grab our next encounter, Lotad. At first, I was complaining about getting Lotad instead of Ralts, but soon I would realize the true power of Lotad the Lotad. After meeting Wally, I go left to Petalburg, and Lotad accidentally gets my encounter. No worries, I'll just catch a Pokemon in Petalburg for... Lotad killed that too. And all the trainers, and now I'm in the gym, I'm killing everybody. Lotad, slow down! Lotad borderline assaulted Roxanne, beating her as we go above Rust. Catching Wismer on the route above. We get Pico back from some random grunt, and as a reward, I'm allowed to sail to Dufern. So that's what I do. In Dufern, I catch a tentacle, Magikarp, and a Zubat named Hawkman, before delivering a letter to Steven and heading back to Rustboro to grab the XP share. But while grinding up my team in Dufern Cave, the unthinkable happens, and Lotad is killed by a headbutting Aeron. I mourn the loss of my boy, but gradually heading into Pokemon Platinum. I pick Mr. Al in the Chimchar, slog through the sea of dialogue, and catch a Bidoof and Starly. After catching Bidoof, I forget to heal and wipe to the literal first trainer in the entire game. Awesome! After I wipe, I spun the wheel, and man oh man, it's a heart gold life for me. Back into this dying run, I had a plan for revitalization. Grind up Wallace into a big strong Butterfree, and get Geodude and Bellsprout high enough to handle themselves as well. So I started grinding, grinding up Lefty and Root to higher levels, before starting to grind up Wallace. At this point, I had gotten fighting the Sprout Tower Rattatas down to a science. To grind up Root, I would fire off Vine Whips until they lowered my defenses with Leer. Then I'd switch and kill with you. After doing that, I leveled them both up, and it's Wallace's turn for brightness. But while switch training, we were fighting against the highest level Rat, who had lowered Geodude's defenses twice, causing Rattata's critical tackle to take out Geodude. This was bad. Not only do I not have a super effective mod for the first two gyms, now my entire team is weak to the first gym. Heart Gold was officially on life support. But the wheel took me back to Pokemon Shield, so we swept through the Galar Mines, killing everything that stood in our path with Drizzle and Corefish. I also changed the cord I was using to connect my capture card to my computer, which solved my input delay issue. This new cord made this experience way more enjoyable. We easily took out the bead fight with Stucky and left Galar's first mine to get our next encounter. Blindly running into the grass, we catch Women's Hair the Electrite, and battle the trainers across the route to prepare for the gym. We find Sonia on top of the hill and learn about something called the Darkest Day. But I'm not too worried about it, and we head into my first gym. Miley leads Gossiflor, and I lead Stunky. 
Psyche is actually pretty awesome for this fight because of Acid Spray. Acid Spray may only have a base 40 power, but it lowers special defense by 2 stages every time it hits. I do a small amount of damage to Gossifor with Acid Spray for a Dynamax, killing it with a 70 base power max ooze. Next into this is Ace, the Cotton Puff thingy. I hit it for weak damage with my first max ooze, before getting hit and set to 32 HP. Next turn I attack again, getting her to less than half, for a not very effective max overrow just kills me. I was genuinely sad, having gotten a catch to Stunky, but death is death, and I send Varsity to Dust Bowl to confuse Ray before swapping into early access the Manchino to kill with three Echo Voices. We obtain our first badges from the Wii, heading back into Moon. I had said before that my risk of wiping this game is very high, and I proved this by wiping to a wild young goose. I think this is my worst wipe yet. We are now down to five games, Heart Gold, Emerald, Black, Y, and Sheep. Black and Heart Gold are both on life support, so I'm very concerned for the future of this challenge. I stuffed this fear down and head into Pokemon Y, ignoring these feelings, just like my therapist tells me. Our acquisition of Sycamore's Gift Charmander was huge, so we grinded it up against the trainers to evolve it into Charmeleon. I also checked to see it impacted huge power, and it did. We made it to Camp Fruit Town and talked to some guy in the tower, telling us he didn't have the poke of flute we needed to remove a sleeping Snorlax from our path. So on Rouse Heaven, we walked down and find a literal castle. At said castle, you can catch a Hone Edge, an extremely powerful Pokemon, but we catch an Inkeda instead. We progressively added human trash to our team and entered the castle. The man inside the castle said he lost his fur throat on his massive estate and he asked for our help to fight. After fighting his lost Furfru, he rewards Shauna and I with a Protect TM and the Poke Flute, allowing us to go wake up the sleeping rope. We awaken it and attempt to catch it, but I run out of Pokeballs and am forced to kill it. On the flower route, we get an awesome encounter. Volby. Yay! Yeah, we placed Human Garbage 2 in the box. Just before our Devil Battle rival fight, Impact evolves into Marrow, and after our rival fight, Impact evolves again into the extremely mediocre Azumarill. We keep it on the team though and enter Zubat Roost. Shockingly, in Zubat Roost, we catch a Zubat, naming her Hawk Girl. We add Hawk Girl to our team over Human Trash and leave Zubat Roost. On the next row, our encounter is Absol, while switching out, the man behind the slaughter gets pursued and dies. The cheer on top of this though is that we accidentally get a crit on Absol, killing our encounter. We dry our tears and head into the next game. Why? Again. Only having 5 games makes the odds of playing a game twice in a row 1 in 10, or about 10%. We continue on, training up apples and the rest of the team, hoping to be strong enough for Grant. Make it to Ambrett Town and find a fishing rod, using it to surf up Love's Disc. In Ambrett, we also talk to some foster god, saying he knows nothing about Mega Stones but is calling May, so we hop on Rhyhorn and head for Glittering Cave. On the way though, we come across a Hippopotas, which we name The Line. We head into Glittering Cave and there find a Lunatone. We catch it and move forward, eventually coming across a man in a very flamboyant suit. He asks if you ever learned not to play a fire, and of course I say no, and we fight. I beat him easily with the help of apples and a line and move ahead, defeating another team player member before heading into a double battle with my rival. This double battle reminds me of my trauma, where I lost my Vavilion, rough, to a moxie scraggy, and I was not going to make the same mistake again. I take on this fight with my Azumara, watching my rival take all the hits as I spam charm. Watching my enemies' attacks starts plummet lower and lower, allowing me to finish the fight with ease. After beating that devil battle, I find my guy, taking his jaw fossil and teleporting back to Embrent. Once I'm back in Embrent, I revive my Tyron and skip town, heading towards Silage City. Once I'm in Silage, I grab an EV named Roman and kick apples off the team. At this point, I discovered the greatest mechanic in all of Pokemon, Pokemon Ami puzzles. I grinded these puzzles like there was no tomorrow. Puzzle after puzzle, improving my time as I went. I grinded and grinded and grinded and grinded. I mean, they're all right. I eventually stopped and took on the jink. I was so nervous, I'm not gonna lie. So I'll let you watch it live. Okay, Impact. I'm gonna Aqua Tail. And since we're a fairy type, I think we're gonna scare Tyrod for coming out. So there shouldn't be any switching. Oh, big damage. Super potion. I know that. So, I mean, like, hopefully... I just have to break through. Please, please. Impact. Oh, impact. It's okay, it's okay. Impact, you got this. You got... Th I believe in you. 
Yeah, see, they can't do anything to you. No, they're all, it's just all this, it's gonna be ice type moves. And you resist those. Fire and ice, baby. You take, you got this. Impact, yes, impact. This is big dubs, brother. Okay, next one is Tyrant. And it doesn't know charm, but I do. Rock Tomb, eh, Stomp, eh, Bite, Charm. We're gonna cripple this thing together. It's okay, Impact. I just need one Charm. One Charm that it's safe enough to send in Tyrant. And win the fight. All I need is one Charm. Come on, Impact. Come on, Impact. Come on, Impact. Come on, Impact. Don't flinch, come on, just, just, you got this, you got this, you got this, mm. it's okay, just one charm, just one charm, come on impact, you have one more chance, please impact, impact, ah, it's okay, I think it's safe to send out Tyrant. I can wall it with Thumper. Jared Ball should do decent damage. Oh my gosh. Full HP. Did 30 damage. Did 27 damage and 27 damage. I, I, I need to Please. Necessary sacrifice to go into the line. Finch. If you flinch, I can lose. I straight up, or at least if you flinch, you at least lose one Pokemon. Please, please. Yes! That should be game. That should be game. He doesn't have any hyper potions. He's not in heal range, he doesn't have a berry. Mm. Grant. It's done. Unfortunately, we have to lay Tyrant to rest and spin the wheel for our next game. Back to black, I was not confident in this game. Tipic beats all the trainers needed to get our Pam Sage. I didn't have Vanessa, but I'm not sure if Vanny and Quarter Pound can do it. I was wrong. They wiped the floor together and get me my badge. We go left, beating Sharon and getting me a Blitzel. We head into a cave, beating more Team Plasma Grunts and catch Deep Cool the Wobat. My team of four heads down to our next town, but then we run into a little girl and a Woobat. Down goes Blitzel, Pants Edge, Woobat, and Qu- Wait, he survived from my HP? He did it! Quarter Pound clings to life once again. Black isn't out yet, baby. Another day, another death, another wheel spin. So we spin and head into Pokemon Shield. After receiving our first badge, we push forward, grabbing an Applin and beating Hop. We get into Hulpery and quickly challenge the gym. Women's Hair the Electric proves himself as the GOAT. Taking out the gym trainers and Ness's first two Pokemon. Fear Knock comes out, but Electric has taken too much damage to let him hit. 
Trevery and Markiplier by Corfish, Dynamax and Fire Off and Max Geyser. I do decent damage, but I also get hit by Nessa's Max Geyser. I switch to Max Darkness, hoping to do more damage, but I do way less and also take a Max Darkness from Nessa. I switch in Pikmin the Applin, knowing that my Dragon Grass typing will wall any move coming my way. I take Max Darkness, living and causing her to de Dynamax. I swap into Sigma and fire off a Mystic Water and Rain Boosted, stab neutral water pulse and easily take the KO. I eat lunch with a man in the stupidest clothing imaginable before going into Galar's second mine and catch Sharp the Shallops. I also fight Bede where he takes out both Women's Hair and Markiplier. Yes, Bede kills both of my goats, but does Golden Sigma come out to deal with the rest of Bede's team? Rest in peace Corefish and Women's Hair, you guys were truly the goats. But no one mourns the wicked and the wheel chooses heart gold. Tired of being in Sprout Tower Purgatory, I decided to grab the eggs from Primo, hashing them in Newbark Town, Cherry Grove, and Violet City. Adding Slugma, Wooper, and Mareep proved to be instrumental in taking out the tower, with Slugma dealing with it single-handedly. Now that I had all these extra Pokemon, I decided to trade away my Bellsprout to get Rocky the Onyx, who proved his worth along with Lane Bryant the Mareep, defeating Faulkner together. After the gym, I grabbed the Togepi egg, and now Heartgold is no longer a dying run. I went down, catching a hop on the route below, and a sand shrew in the cave. I emerged from the cave, taking out all the fools on Slowpoke well, with Wallace, the now Butterfree, and used Onyx and Slugma to take care of Bugsy in his gym. I exited the gym and easily beat my rival, Poop. I enter Ilex Forest and grab the Cut HM, teaching it to sand shrew. I said I wanted to headbutt tree Pokemon, so I met newly hatched Togepi named Clayton, headbutt some trees for our encounter. I popped a Pinnacle, and so I sent out sand shrew to weaken it for the capture. Pineco went boom, kicking itself down and Sandshrew along with it. Sandshrew was an unfortunate loss, but the Heartgold run was alive, and Sandshrew didn't seem all that important to its survival. We hit the wheel again, rolling shield again. We went into the wild area, picking up Mudbray, Caterpie, and Natu. I got some more XP candy, getting my underlevel team a little bit stronger before finishing my trek through Galar Mine. We beat Teamy out the exit, sending out Duskull and using Will-O-Wisp to cripple their Pokemon. We met Kabu there too, but he left shortly after. We exit Galar Mine and I attempt to catch my counter, Hatchrim, when my plan goes awry when a neutral Psybeam kills Fire-type the Diglett. I had him for a while, but his death wasn't as sad as my goats. We added the murderous Hatchrim to the team as well as Shellos instead of our useless Applin. We spun the wheel and headed into Heart Gold. It's always Heart Gold. We leave Alex Forest and continue to lead with Togepi, starting every fight I can with it to earn friendship. This pays off because at level 12, Togepi evolves into Togetic. My encounter on the route before Golden Raw is Abra, but it breaks free from my Great Ball and teleports away. At this point is where I made a mistake. I forgot I had caught a Spearow earlier, and received the gift Spearow and Golden Rod and used it for the trainers on the route above. I did not use it in this gym, and I released it as soon as I remembered. I'm really really sorry about this, and I'll try to be better next time. Either way, I breeze through the trainer above and catch Nidoran female. Little did I know, High Noon was the single most important encounter I will ever I go against Whitney at her gym, using Slugma to take care of Clefairy, and using one yawn on her milk tank before switching into Flaffy. She falls asleep as I switch in, but immediately wakes up and uses her Lumberry, exactly as I had planned. I paralyze her with a Thunder Wave and switch into Rocky. I used Rocky's Screeches to lower her defense to minus 6, and spammed Headbutt until she went down, earning the gym badge and somehow turning this dead run to our furthest game yet. I grab the Squirt Battle and catch Rocky 2 the Sudowoodle, before going forward and catching Stantler 2. I made it into the Burn Tower where I'm friendship grinding my Zubat, but one crit quick attack from a wild Rattata sends Kendra six feet under. I spin the wheel again and land on Emerald. Finally, I get to go back. Nervous for my gym battle against Brawly, I still slip port and grab my encounter just above. I luck out and it's a Wingle. I add Wingle to the team and go up against Brawly. Marsh Tom takes care of Machop and Mighty and a two shots Metatype, whose only attacking move is Focus Punch. Third and finally is Makuhita. I send out Wingle and go for a Super Sonic. It connects, and even better, Makuhita hits himself. I go for a wing attack and barely miss the KO, but Makuhita hits himself again, killing himself and getting me one of the easiest gym badges yet. But do you know what else is easy? Hit the subscribe button. It helps with a ton and it really means a lot to me. Thanks. Wingle edges himself in history as I box him for Magikarp. For now, it is the day of Gyarados. Gyarados carries us through every fight until Watson, where Marshchomp hits Mudshot five times and gets us our third badge. We catch Meryl and Solrock while we trek forward, beating up Maxi and Mount Pyre before it's time for Flannery's gym. We already have five water types and a rock type. This badge was going to be easy. 
We did unfortunately lose Lunatone the Soul Rock in the fight, so our incredible time in Emerald was now over, for now. The wheel says it's time to go back to Pokemon Shield, so I booted up and immediately head over to the wild area to get more XP candies. After grinding raids, I went back to the hotel, where Marnie asked me to fight. I say why not, expecting an easy fight. I fart around against her Pokemon, taking damage willy-nilly until Morpeko comes out. Hunger Switch Morpeko comes out and wipes my entire team. All of my Pokemon evolve when they're like, stir level 30. So Bite After Bite does so much damage to my unevolved Pokemon, and I just can't fight back. I lose a Pokemon Shield, and it's off the wheel. The wheel guides me into my 7th tour in Heart Gold, where I kick things off by fighting my rival. The fight starts off easy, but the Poison on Slugma stops him from being able to take the kill, forcing me to switch out. And this stupid poison caused all of my members to be whittled down, until I got to a point where I have to sack something to have a chance of winning the fight. I send out Onyx, he takes a magical leaf, and doesn't get back up. I set up Sudowoodo to fail and finish the fight on 1 HP. We go back to the wheel once again and head into Pokemon Y. I spend a good while grinding more puzzles on Pokemon on me, trying to increase my friendship with Golbat and Eevee. I'm hoping Roman will evolve into Espeon, so I'm playing with it as much as I can during the day, hoping to increase its friendship. I take on Karina in Geosense Town, beating her first Lucario with Hawkgirl and her second with the line. I make my way onto the route, catching Wankershim the Hariyama. I take on the double battle just before Reflection Cave, where I make a terrible mistake. I run a Beedrill and a Zoomerill, using Charm to lower Machoke's attack and setting up a Sword Stance with Beedrill. Mr. Mime outspeeds my Sword Stance and hits Beedrill with a strong side beam. This is where I was stupid and thought, oh, I'll just kill him next turn with Twin Needle, but it outspeeds me, so Beedrill dies. I was pretty bummed about this one. Subtrain was my oldest living teammate behind Impact, and honestly, I'd like to think they were close friends. I'm sorry, Impact, and rest in peace, Subtrain. After shedding my tears, it's time for Heart Gold once again. It's always Heart Gold time. I catch Bong the Coughing and add him to the team. We release the legendary dogs to roam about the region and take on Morty for our fourth gym badge. I take care of his first two Pokemon with assurances from coughing, but for Gengar, I switch into Rocky 2 to fire off some fate attacks to pin them down. His second Haunter comes out last, and I bring in Bong to finish the fight. I go to Ecruteek Theater to grab Surf and quickly head right of Ecruteek to grab Strength and Shadow Claw, before finally heading left to continue the story. I catch a Farfetch named Master Ball and a Tauros named Rebel before getting into Olivine City. I head to the lighthouse to trigger the Amphi quest and we use my newly acquired Surf to go into Sea and Wood, picking up a Tentacool on the way. I start my fight with Chuck using the worst Johto Pokemon of all time, Jumpluff. I start the fight off with a Leech Seed. It connects and I put Primate to sleep next turn. I Mega Drain a few times before stupidly switching into Wallace, expecting a Focus Punch. Instead, I get a 4 times super effective Rock Slide. Wallace instantly dies. I switch in our newly evolved Ampharos to take it down. I next is Polyrath, but a Sleep Seed is too powerful of a combo, and Jumpluff takes up Polyrath, securing our 5th badge. The wheel takes us back to Emerald. I was happy to be back in Emerald, but I was also really scared of taking on Norm. I was battling through the trainers when it came upon an attack room. A plus 6 attack Stingsigoon kills Tentacruel, but I send in Hawkman to kill it before it takes any more lives. Our time in Emerald was very short, but I spun the wheel again and head into Heart Gold for the ninth time. I go to the Ruins of Alf to get a Moonstone, using it at my Need Arena to evolve it into Nido Queen. I use my Dig TM for my newly evolved Nido Queen to sweep Jasmine's gym, handing me over my 6th badge. I run over to Mahogany Town, encountering the roaming Entei on the way, but I fail it. I head up to Lake of Rage to catch the Gyarados terrorizing the lake. After catching Jay Garrick, I head back down to the Mahogany to take care of the Rocket Hideout and catch an Electrode named Shell Armor. I head to Price's Gym using Ampharos to take out Seal, but I didn't read the text and didn't swap into Cragsire on the Pillow Swine coming out. This misplay caused me a lot of switching, ultimately forcing me to sack a Pokemon. I sack Slugma before going into Crag to kill the Pillow Swine and back in Ampharos to kill the Dugong. We get the 7th badge, but I lost Slugma, the goat that saved the run all the way back in Sprout Tower. Rest in peace, you weak, terrible slug. I do change around my team before hitting the wheel, taking off Quag and Sudorudo for Bong and Jay Garrick, the shiny Gyarados, and adding Rebel the Tauros in place of our newly dead Slugma. I hit the wheel, going right back into Heart Gold. I swear, this wheel is obsessed with this game. But since I beat 7 gyms, it's time for the Team Rocket takeover. I go to the radio tower, running around all the trainers to get to Petrol. This fight is scary. This guy has a team full of bombs. I play around them as best I can, but his wheezing used the explosion, killing my wheeze. Rest in peace, Bomb. You were a real one. You spin the wheel and get black. Finally, something other than heart gold. I boot it up, 
but I forgot to save, sending me back to where I was after losing Perlon. I decide even though it's a mistake, and even though I should have lost Pokemon Black, I didn't, and now it's time to seek redemption. Things go pretty much the same, Quarter Pound and Vanny working in tandem to beat the first gym easily. Things do change slightly, when I decide to go for a Shaking Grass encounter, grabbing on Dino instead of Blitzel. At first I was bummed, but I would soon come to realize this is a blessing in disguise. Wellspring Cave is the same though, catching Woobat just like last time. This time though, I trained my team for the fight that took this run to its knees before, beating it easily. In the Pinwheel Forest exterior, I can catch Temple, creating a powerful Waterfire Grass core for my small team of 5. I defeat Lenora easily, having my Pig take care of our Herdier, and having my bulky Audino take the powerful Retaliate Watchdog leaves with, using Attract and killing it with Secret Power. Team Plasma tries to steal the head of a dead Pokemon. Why? I'm not sure. Either way, I'm forced to get the Dragonite Skull back, defeating the Goobers in the forest and grabbing the Miracle Seat before heading into Castelia City. Once in Castelia City, I deal with even more Team Plasma shenanigans. This game really frustrates me with how much Team Plasma stuff there is. I literally played for 4 minutes and 21 seconds before having to deal with Team Plasma once again. After begrudgingly dealing with them, I battle against her. Two Flame Chargers from Tignite torches his Whirlipede, and out comes Dwebble. I bring in my Temple and destroy it with a Bubble Beam. Third and finally is his Levani, who I kill with a few Flame Chargers from Quarter Pound, earning me my third badge. At this point in the whole challenge, I had decided to lock in, and pull up the teams for every major battle I was facing. This made the following Bianca and Sharon fight so easy, allowing me to grab my Root 4 encounter, Cool Guy the Sand Isle, and my Desert Resort encounter, Pellets the Darumaka. Once I entered Mombasa, I immediately had to deal with even more Team Plasma shenanigans, having to beat up two grunts straight after entering and fight N after a romantic Ferris wheel ride. This end fight ended my last Nuzlocke I did of this game, so I was as careful as I could. I did run into problems with the Scraggy, missing a crucial air cutter with Woobat, forcing me to sack it to win the fight. After the fight, we placed Woobat in the box to rest with Patrat and Purloin, but this run was officially alive once more. The wheel took me to Heart Gold, meaning I'd been a Heart Gold more than twice as many times as my second place game, Y. After the loss of Bong, we had to keep going, dealing with the rest of the Team Rocket Fools and putting Pseudo Wudo back on the team. During these fights, Rebel was putting in the work, taking out so many Pokemon, he was really earning his spot on the team. Though after my battle with Archer, I went to the Poke Athlon Dome, hoping to get a shiny stone to evolve my Togetic. After my first event, I decided to look it up, and I saw that you can only get a shiny stone in the post game. This means it's literally impossible to evolve Togetic into Togekiss before your first time winning against the lead, which is just unbelievably stupid. Either way, I have to keep moving, killing my Ice Cave encounter and heading into Blackthorn City. The clear fight is legitimately scary without your Pokemon from Ice Cave, so I had to make a plan. The Electrode Iron caught in the Rocket Hideout showed himself to be our answer, with Screech, Spark, and Light Screen. This would totally wall Claire's Kingdra, because all of her attacks were special. So I walled her, beating her deathless. But we had to take the quiz in the Dragon Center at our badge, picking up Dratini in there too. Coming out of the Dragon Center, I had to go pick up the Master Ball from Elm, before being told to go do the Gauntlet against the Kimono Girls. These fights are genuinely scary, having to fight all 5 evolutions with full movesets and appropriate levels. I barely squeaked out deathless wins against the first 4, when Vaporeon came out, every member of my team had almost no health. I tried outspeeding with Togetic, but Vaporeon was faster, killing Clayton, my Eggy boy, with an Aurora Beam. I send out Ampharos next, I know it's as slow as balls, but I was just hoping to live a hit and get off the discharge. I don't. Third, I sent out Rebel, scoring a massive strength before going down to Surf. I sent out Gyarados next, outspeeding and flinching her twice with Bite, allowing me to win the fight. I was genuinely so sad about these guys' deaths. Ampharos being with me since the Sprout Tower Massacre, Tokubi with me since after the first gym, and Rebel carrying us through the late game. They will all be missed. The wheel finally decides to let me play something other than Heart Gold, sending me back into Emerald. I stood before my father, the fifth gym leader, but I had a plan. Marshtop takes care of Spindle with two mud shots before Vigoroth comes out. I switched into King to Wingle, spamming wing attack before we were both at one shot. For some reason, I used Protect on the turn I knew he was going to heal, with Pelipper dying shortly after and sending in Hawkman to take him down. Our next fight is against a terrifying Lainu, and I used Gyarados, spamming Dragon Rage until a Belly Drum boosted, Stab, Critical Slash, annihilates Gyarados. Then Hawkman thankfully outspeeds and kills next turn. Out fourth and finally is slacking, but Dig Strats with Fascism allows me to kill the Fat Monkey. 
I lay Pelipper and Gyarados to rest, placing them with Coughing and Numeral. But another death means another spin. We land a Heart Gold, but I'm not too mad about this one. There's a chance I win the game right here, right now. I grab Winner the ho and the Bell Tower and head towards Kanto. I run through the Victory Road, beating Poop our rival for the last time. We step into the Pokemon League. My team and I are ready for anything. High Noon the Nido Queen, J. Garrick the Gyarados, Winner the Ho-Oh, Shell Armor the Electrode, Spectacle the Tentacruel, and Commitment the Rapidash. These team members, some as old as High Noon and some as young as Commitment. We are all together to beat this Nuzlocke Roulette once and for all. Will Electrode and Ho-Oh bring him to his knees, and Koga's the same, toasted by Commitment and High Noon. Third is Bruno, but he's wiped by Commitment, High Noon, and Spectacle. Karen, roasted by Jay Garrick and Spectacle. Finally, our final challenge stands before us, Lance. Right here, right now. We either win the challenge or we wipe and are brought back to the wheel. 12 tours in a heart gold, and it comes down to this. Lance starts with Gyarados and I start with Electrode. Shell armor barely doesn't take him out with a Thunderbolt, letting Gyarados get in a hit before getting healed and going down next turn. Out next is his most powerful Dragonite. I bring in Spectacle, hoping for my Ice Cream to one shot, and it doesn't. It has 50%, Dragonite eats a Citrus Berry, and one shot Spectacle with an Outrage. Five team members remain. I bring in Jay, who does massive damage with Ice Fang, and since Dragonite is stuck in Outrage, I kill with Ice Fang next turn. Lance's third Pokemon is Aerodactyl, so I take out Shell Armor. Shell Armor does half with Thunderbolt, and Aerodactyl misses a crucial Rock Slide, causing me to take him out next turn. Fourth is Dragonite, who outspeeds Jay, but misses, allowing me to do 75% with an Ice Fang. Lance heals, but I take him right back down. But unfortunately, this Dragonite does outspeed and kills Jay with a Thunder, before team members remain. I send out Shell Armor, outspeeding and killing with a crit Thunderbolt. Outfit is his last Dragonite, and I hit a weak Thunderbolt before dying to a Blizzard. Three team members remain. I bring out Winner, Dragonite outspeeds and hits a Dragon Rush, doing less than half. I fire back with Sacred Fire, getting a crucial burn. Dragonite then misses his second Dragon Rush, allowing me to hit him with a Flamethrower, getting him down into the deep red. But a full restore from Lance brings him right back up. I critical hit a Flamethrower, doing about 25%. Lance then uses Dragon Rush, bringing me down to 7 health. I fire out a Sacred Fire, getting the burn again. But then, Dragonite kills me with two Blizzards. Two team members remain. I bring out Commitment, and his Dragonite misses Dragon Rush, allowing my Fire Blast and the burn damage to take him out. Outlast his Charizard and I spam stomp, outspeeding and getting a few flinches here and there. Charizard hears back to full though, hitting me with two air slashes and a dragon claw, taking out commitment in red health. One team member remains. I send out High Noon, my last Pokemon. I caught her all the way back before the third gym. She has helped me win so many fights, and now she needs to help me just one last time. Charizard hits an air slash, I hit a strength. Charizard is at 1 HP and I'm at 96. If Charizard crits this next attack, we lose. If he doesn't, I win. Charizard goes for Fire Fang and leaves me on 30 HP. Strength hits, making High Noon and I the champions of Heart Gold and of this Nuzlocke Roulette. 36 wheel spins, 9 games, and it all came down to this. Thank you for watching, and if you made it this far, subscribe for more. Have a good one, guys.